10 Most Unusual Ships in the World There are many different types of ships that travel the sea, yet certain ships stand out from the crowd. They have interesting designs, intriguing features, and even unusual forms. Let's start today's video with the top 10. The Strangest Ships Hi there welcome to Topics World, please give your suggestions in the comment section. Number 10, The Ocean Bird The Ocean Bird Because oceans constantly have a breeze, the brilliant idea has been created to try to build a boat that runs purely on wind power, known as the ocean. Bird, the vessel in question, is scheduled to enter service in 2024. It will be a 200-meter-long automotive carrier capable of transporting up to 7,000 automobiles. This will be possible at any given time. Because of the fact that it will sell wings. To be especially efficient, this might stretch up to 105 meters over the ocean. These sails will be similar to aeroplane wings. Ascending vertically from the deck while traditional engines will be used as backup. The objective is for the boat to save 90% of carbon emissions when compared to a conventional ship. And, while there are some additional drawbacks, such as higher fees and the fact that the ocean bird will take 12 days rather than 8 to traverse the Atlantic, the Atlantic surely works against it. The aim is that shippers will overlook these drawbacks and give this high-tech vehicle a chance. Number 9, Russian Monitor Novorod. Novorod is under Russian surveillance. Throughout the late 19th century, European nations began to create ironclad battleships to replace their now outdated would-be battleships. Different countries tried out new looks and features, but none were as strange as those used on the Russian monitor Novorod. It was designed in the shape of a frisbee in 1874. This is because the ship's form allowed it to be extraordinarily broad for its size. As a result, its buoyancy would increase. What is the theoretical implication of this? This ship could carry significantly more armament than its counterparts of comparable size. On the one hand, this was clearly the case after all of its armory of up to 11-inch rifled. Muzzle-loading weapons were quite deadly for their size at the time. However, the Novorod's completely spherical form made it an ineffective vessel at sea, with a peak speed of only six and a half knots. Not its slow-turning radius meant that it couldn't engage moving targets for lengthy periods of time. As a result, the ship was assigned to the Coast Guard, where it served well until his retirement in 1903. Number 8. The Contiki Contiki Most archaeologists assume that Southeast Asians populated Polynesia, because their mastery of the seas allowed them to sail against Pacific Ocean currents to neighboring islands. Despite the fact that all traditional archaeological material, language patterns, and human-introduced plant trials have all confirmed this notion for years, many people did not think that such a journey was conceivable. And in 1947, Norwegian explorer Thor Heyerdahl wanted to test the claim that Hawaiian immigrants originated in South America by building his own ship that was hard to steer. His thought was that a ship may have been created. Without the aid of navigational equipment, this would have drifted to Polynesia. Because the fact that Pacific victories moved from east to west made this concept sound feasible, he produced a custom-built raft using the same sorts of wood and designs. That would have been feasible in South America at the time. He arrived in Polynesia in 1947, following a three-month journey. While his idea still has some support today, it has mostly been debunked. Nonetheless, his adventure was rather remarkable. Number 7, The SS Atlantis While Concrete SS. Atlantis while concrete is an excellent building material for anything from apartment buildings to multi-kilometer long bridges, sea travel is one use where it is virtually worthless. After all, the substance is simply too thick to float. 
regardless, it was in the heart of a U.S. Navy ship known as the SS Atlantis. When the United States entered World War I, it required ships to carry troops and supplies overseas. However, due to a paucity of steel, naval engineers were assigned. They agreed on concrete as a cost-effective option since tiny ships have been built with the material. As a result, they were able to float the vessel using airtight compartments and a big haul. However, it quickly became evident that the SS Atlantis traveled far too slowly, consumed far too much fuel, and was unsuitable for transatlantic voyages. Consider that sailors were distrustful of them and referred to them as floating tombstones. It was immediately obvious that it might be used as a construction material. As a result, the SS Atlantis was decommissioned after just one Number year of seven, active duty. The SS Atlantis, while this resulted concrete. in what was finally auctioned off to private interests and a far slower decomposition than planned. It is currently a deliberately placed and still complete shipwreck. New Jersey's Cape May. Number 6, The Sea Breacher. The breaker of the sea most boats float, but the marine breacher puts you in the body of a mechanical sea monster so you can move through the water. Available in three distinct variants the breaker of the sea you can travel by gliding on top of the water, plunging beneath it, or flying above it. The concept is that they mimic the motions of species such as dolphins or sharks, and may therefore dive as deep as 5 meters for up to 30 seconds at a time. They may reach speeds of up to 40 km per hour below water and 100 km per hour above water, and can be flown with the tops closed or open, allowing you to tailor your sea breacher experience. The customizing of these incredible water toys does not stop there. Because, aside from its motor and basic design, almost every detail, including the paint job and internal dashboards, is totally configurable using this. Add-ons such as an extra seat, a snorkeling extension, a GoPro-type camera, a yacht mount, and a marine-grade audio system are available on more costly variants. However, while he appears to be in good spirits, I must advise you. They are rather expensive. This is just one that may cost between $80,000 and $100,000. Given how awesome they truly are. Many others share our need for more than just happiness. That money will be used to purchase one. Number 5 Tesra Cantaries When it comes to military ships, Tesra Cantaries reign supreme. The one that is perhaps the largest and possibly the oddest was created over 2,000 years ago and is known as the Tesseract Cantors, or 40, when translated from ancient Greek. It was simply a large catamaran galley, most likely built by Egypt's Ptolemy IV. A sand facade Plutarch mentions it fully in writing. He was far too big to be a useful warfighting machine. However, the enormous size and ridiculous add-ons make it a propaganda effort that would put most current rulers to shame, perhaps carried forward by a 4,000-man army. It was essentially an extremely wide catamaran, with a length of 130 meters and a height of 24 meters. If true, it would be the largest ship built in antiquity and, most likely, the largest human-powered vessel ever created. It was planned so that 40 men would guide each row, with each column, most likely looking for anything distinctive or striking. In addition to these rowers, over 2,000 troops would be on board at any given moment. They would have access to six naval battering rams and a catapult on board. But even though this huge ship looks like a powerhouse, it was very hard to control and couldn't be used for anything but military ceremonies. It was definitely impressive, but it probably never saw action. Number 4, the Boca Vanguard. The Boca Vanguard is carrying people. Don't you have an oil platform? Massive cruise ships can be difficult to build, but the Boca Vanguard's innovative design permits it to accomplish so with its October 2012 debut. 
the Vanguard is primarily a big semi-submersible heavy lift ship. This is said to be the biggest of its kind. And it distinguishes itself thanks to both of its abilities. And it's an odd design in terms of capabilities. The ship can transport up to 100,000 tons of cargo but can only do so because of its unusual design. This strange spacecraft has a flat open central deck and five enormous vertical wall-like constructions on its sides. One of these has the crew's residential quarters. This odd shape conceals a complicated ballast tank system. This allows it to become semi-immersed, with just the tops of the vertical structures staying above water when it is submerged. Any kind of floating cargo can just slide onto the deck and be fastened securely. This is then pulled away, allowing enormous boats to be moved without the need for cranes. The ship's Archimedes law, which stipulates that a body submerged in fluid feels an up-push equal to the weight of the fluid displaced, is used by the ship. This law is significant since it permits the ship to carry cargo. Massive automobiles can go as long as they are half underwater. And by having the wall-like features, the boat can run without the entire thing being submerged. In any event, the ship has been successfully operated using this information, and I wouldn't be shocked if additional ships are created using this information. In the near future, it will be similar. Number 3 RP Flip Ship The RP switch while most research ships resemble normal ships, in DRP, it flips this premise on its head in a literal sense. This is due to the fact that the RP flip is a ship. That is literally 90 degrees. As a result, it faces directly into the ocean. Because of this, it is unlike most other ships of its class owned by the US Office of Naval Research. The RP flip is a ship that can be towed horizontally, but once it arrives at its destination, it may flip 90 degrees and partially flood itself, resulting in an upright research platform. Only the front 17 meters of the RP's platform sticking up out of the water flips, for a total length of 108 meters. This is the reason why the RP flips like this. As a result, it may analyze underwater wave noises and movement to attain its unusual posture. While this flipping may sound like a living nightmare for the crew members aboard, it uses ballast water from the sea below. It appears to be a fairly straightforward technique since, despite the complexity of the movement, practically everything on board is built around a tube that is utilized both horizontally and vertically to make the shift seamless. The structure's ability to stay upright is due to the fact that it's shaped nearly like a baseball bat, and constructed in a manner similar to spar buoys, allowing it to float while scarcely wobbling in the waves. However, while this construction is really amazing on occasion, it must be relocated to land. To do this, the RP flip simply employs compressed air to force previously held water from the ballast tanks. Returning it to a more normal horizontal position, allowing towing back to home base. Number 2, USS Zumwalt. The Zumwalt, the USS while the US Navy is brimming with ships, the USS Zumwalt may be the ship with the strangest design and the coolest technology. It is said to be the world's largest and most technologically sophisticated watercraft. It belongs to the warship class. This is intended to combat naval warfare fully above the water's surface. In terms of performing this work, the USS Zumwalt is a Saint R, measuring 183 meters in length and weighing around 15,000 tons. It is enormous. Yes, yet this does not prevent it from being stealthy, because its design compensates for its bulk by using futuristic sharp angles that turn its radar cross section. In terms of speed, its wave-piercing tumble-home hull lets it easily travel across the ocean, while two Rolls-Royce MT-30 gas turbines drive a pair of Curtis Wright electric generators, making the ship both powerful and fuel-efficient. It is a jack-of-all-trades in terms of armaments, since it possesses diverse weaponry for different scenarios. 
For longer range targets, it uses AD, Advanced Vertical Launch Cells, to launch regular Tomahawk and Sea Sparrow missiles, and 255 mm advanced gun systems for shorter range targets. It employs Mark 46 in clothing and firearms. If things get extremely heated, it can send out its five helicopters to deal with troublesome opponents. All of this should make the Zumwalt an outstanding ship. I should mention that substantial doubts have been raised about whether or not the Zumwalt class exists. While the Zumwalt was supposed to aid in land attacks, the logistics of how this could work were never completely smoothed out, not to mention the fact that many of its capabilities are just better suited for other types of ships. As a result, while the Zumwalt may be capable of doing it all, it is unlikely to achieve its full potential in the near future. Number 1 Project Habakkuk Habakkuk has one project for the time being, most aircraft carriers are composed of heavy-duty steel. There was a serious possibility. For reference, that one would be made of everything and ice. Early in the 1940s, German U-boats were wreaking havoc on Allied shipping in the Atlantic. So, to fight it, it was suggested to make a big floating mobile and an island made of ice that wouldn't sink. This was because steel and aluminum were in short supply because of the war. Apply. So, if practicable, ice was viewed as a brilliant option, according to the ship's inventor, Geoffrey Pike, who envisioned a vessel that was nearly 1.6 kilometers long with a solid home, linked with the ship, both having a landing platform on top and a central gap to hide. The aircraft seen below is intended to be the biggest machine ever built on land or sea. Its massive size and capacity to be repaired with water would practically make it unsinkable. It would also use a blend of wood and metal to keep it from melting. Picrete is the name given to ice. The concept was that they would offer support and make up for shortcomings in pure ice, and that they could be machined like wood, cast metal, and wood, and that they would float better and melt more slowly than ordinary ice. Despite this, the ship would need to be insulated and have a vast onboard refrigeration system to keep it from melting. Even though this was a huge problem, Winston Churchill was given permission to make a secret one-ton copy. However, it soon became clear that this was a pretty bad idea that's while smaller models may have worked well. It was soon discovered that a full-scale vehicle would weigh as much as 2.2 million tons and would require as many as 26 electric motors to move and steer itself across the ocean. As a result, factors such as high cost in terms of material and price and eventual lack of need caused it to ultimately be shelved. Although, what would certainly be cool if a modern rendition were to be made. Thanks for watching.